Underdog Fantasy is the fastest growing fantasy app and easiest place to play fantasy sports. Just jump on underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft your team, and that's it. And if drafts aren't your thing, they also have a pick'em game where you can win 20 times your money in a single night. Use promo code RADIO and Underdog will double your first deposit when you sign up with up to $100 in bonus cash. Deposit $100? Get $100 free. That's promo code RADIO. Terms and conditions apply. A fortune forecast update brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. Well, hey there, Ohio. We're tracking a lot of jackpot activity over the next few days. We have Rolling Cash 5 and Lucky for Life in the forecast the entire week. But we also have major drawings for Powerball moving in, followed by scattered Mega Millions drawings through the week, with some classic lotto drawings popping up here and there as well. There are big drawings every day, so stay tuned to the Fortune Forecast Center for the latest jackpot developments. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Please play responsibly. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. Today we talk the NBA Finals. They're happening. Believe it or not, they will eventually happen tomorrow. We're not quite there yet. But we haven't really talked about any playoff stuff since Friday. Feels only fair. I know it's not that many shows, I guess, but it is a decent number of days. That's five days since the last time we talked about any actual happening basketball. Covered a couple of teams. Uh, actually, only one team this week, because Monday was Memorial Day. We had our little, it was a rant fest. But today, we're going to talk to Mike Fiddle of the Advantage Podcast here at Sports Ethos about the finals. That's coming up in just a couple of moments here on the pod. And then tomorrow, on Thursday, we'll dive back into the players on the different teams. I think we were we're getting ready for the Wizards. Is that the next one on the board? Yeah, that's right. I said because I'm the whiz and nobody beats me at the end of yesterday's show. But today, it's basketball focused. And I get to speak to another human, which is always fun because typically schedules don't align all that well. I'm a shuttle service over here. You guys already know that. I talk about my personal life once in a while on the podcast. It used to be a lot more. If you think it's a lot now, it used to be way more. When I had my first kid and my brain just couldn't handle it, I just talked about all of that on the show. And that dude didn't sleep for like the first 11 months of his life. So a lot of podcasts was me just beyond tired, meandering thoughts through a show. And you stuck with me. For some reason, you stuck with me. We're into June now. Oh, today's my birthday. Yeesh. Oh, boy. Feeling grumpy. Feeling old. What do I want for my birthday? What's a birthday gift? This is something I have never... I haven't done this on the podcast before. Uh, birthday present. I keep asking you guys to go follow our baseball and our football stuff. And so I think that's actually going to be my birthday request for this year. If you love me and you want to do something for my birthday, go follow Ethos Fantasy FB and Ethos Fantasy BB on Twitter. And then let me know you did it. I'm at Dan Vesper, so you guys probably all follow me by now, and we've probably all communicated at some point. So uh, go drop a follow on those things. Check out some of these, because I'm betting a lot of you that listen to this show play other fantasy sports too. I don't really. I'm trying to do baseball this year, and I'm terrible at it, but I'm trying, damn it. Give me, give me some credit for trying. I'm going to screw it up if I haven't already. I probably have. I'm, I'm mid-pack which I'll take. Dude, baseball's hard. Joe, our baseball host. Dude, this is hard. <laughs> I guess a lot of people say that about basketball. It has to do with what you're willing to to dive into, how far you're willing to do it, and so on and so forth. But anyway, uh, let's get into the mix. Uh, please do follow those accounts, my birthday present. Um, I am... 39. I don't know if you guys had knew how... I think I've said it on the show how old I am. I'm an early 80s child. Next year, I'm going to be real grumpy. 40? Oof. Yeah, I'm not not looking forward to that one. I already have the digestive system of an 85-year-old, so at least that one's probably not changing much. Anywho. Let's talk Warriors. Let's talk 
Celtics. As promised on yesterday's podcast, it's finals discussion day. Kind of saved it up a little bit here. Got it a little closer to the finals, but also, I'm not going to lie to anybody, it's really about when schedules align, as, as is almost always the case when I get to talk to another human being. It always brings me such joy. And this is a first-time guest. He's a host of a fellow Sports Ethos podcast. That's The Advantage. And his name is Mike Fiddle. He's been dominating NBA betting for, well, what is it now? Mike, I'll bring, I'll bring you in on that note. First of all, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> Welcome. How you doing, Dan? Thank you for having me. I've been a longtime listener to Fantasy NBA Today. I've heard you describe yourself as a niche celebrity a few times, and I would say I've definitely been in your niche world for the last few years. So now to be on the other side of this pod, uh, I'll invoke some Larry David and say this is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. If you invoke us a hero of mine, you're all, all automatically in my good graces. Uh, again, Mike is the host of the Advantage podcast here at Sports Ethos. The Twitter handle is at Advantage Pod underscore SE, which I realize might be hard to remember. It will be tagged in the tweet about this show. I will retweet it. I'll make sure everybody sees that thing. Uh, but to finish the question that I was starting before, you've been an NBA better for a long time now and had a lot of success. And I just kind of want to like set the table here. We're going to talk about the finals and how to bet it, different ways, different ways to look at it. Uh, it's what your podcast covers in addition to other stuff. And I want to talk about the pod a little bit later in the show, but you yourself how did you get into sports betting? How long is it? Have you been doing it uh, pretty aggressively? And and you know what are the results? I feel like people need to know if they're going to trust you. Of course. So this is actually my ninth NBA season betting. I'm closing in on my ninth consecutive winning NBA season as well. I've it's never amazing. lost throughout betting an NBA season. Uh, betting the association is kind of my home, my bread and butter. It's what uh, butters the biscuit. I say. Um, delicious it's definitely my best i've been betting since i was a freshman in college of course like most people i started out illegally gambling on a weird bookie site um, <laughs> some are still doing so yeah exactly and and, and my uh, you know my mom's fiance at the time so they didn't end up getting married but they were engaged at the time uh he wanted to get closer with me and become friendly with me and i was a young college student freshman in college and one thing that we were both interested in was sports so he threw $500 in a sports betting account. And when we would hang out, you know, weekends or holidays, and I would see him and my mom, we would throw 50 bucks on a given game and talk about it. And when I went back to school, I reached out to him and I said, his name was Stuart. I said, Hey, Stuart, can I have that uh, account name and password so I could start doing this with <laughs> my friends that. in college? And he reluctantly said, yes, uh, he probably thought he was throwing away his $500. But over the course of about a year and a half in college, two years continuing to do this, I grew that account to $18,000. Oh, my goodness. I think so Stuart I, became a big fan of yours. Stuart has always been a big fan of mine. Um, <laughs> you know, he and my mom, like I said, they didn't make it. Uh, it's probably for the best in the long run. This and feels, that time, feels like, a behind the, this is like a behind-the-scenes podcast there. Yeah, exactly. Well, we don't need to get into my mom's relationship too much, but you know, I pivoted away from that. I actually don't know if Stuart to this day even knows that eighteen grand is sitting in that account um, or how much I really got it up to. But I, you know, started then betting on my own. Uh, I, I didn't have those kind of funds to start off with a ten thousand dollar bankroll, so I just got back in it with a few hundred dollars. I've done a lot of daily fantasy stuff. I've done a lot of gambling stuff. I'm mainly NBA and NFL, but. What I ask myself before every season, Dan, is not, am I going to beat the sports book? It's how much am I going to beat the sports book by? That's really remarkable. I think I'm a pretty good NBA handicapper, and I, and I do talk about it from time to time on the show, but I feel like almost everybody has that one year where things are a little bit funky. Uh, I haven't bet it as much lately as I did before, but also there's a certain... Uh, I, I think folks need to have, and, and I, I worked as, as a handicapper at, at pregame for a couple of years, and I'm very open in saying I lost both years I tried to bet baseball. I find baseball to be unbelievably difficult to bet. It's just a totally different game because you're betting exclusively money lines, and it's so crazy variable where you know, on any, any given night, the Pirates can say beat the Dodgers, and the whole thing gets upended. It's not like some of these other sports where it's like, you know, there, there just isn't that same level of variability. 
And if you have an eye for these things in basketball, you can be one of those people that just finds ways to win, whatever it might be. For me, a lot of it is motivational angles. But uh, again, talking to Mike Fiddle here, host of the Advantage podcast, you sent me before this podcast, and I'm really, I'm, I'm not going to work through it specifically. We'll kind of follow some of it loosely. Your finals preview information, a lot of which, by the way, you, you've had on an Advantage podcast episode if people want to go even further into this stuff. But I thought it would be fun to talk about some of that today on this show because a lot of folks are getting into sports betting for the first time right now, and it's so important. This drives me crazy, and I'm sure it does you too, where uh, NBA analysts who had never bet sports are suddenly deemed experts in sports betting just because they've been covering the NBA a long time. And I think it's steering a lot of people in the wrong direction. Have you seen that happening too? I literally have seen Michael Wilbon give his take on the spread before a game on ESPN Countdown. I literally can't watch that show anymore because of... And they all I mean, have I, to. It, they all have yeah, to do it, it now. It, it's like it, it's contractually There's so obligated. many other outlets to consume NBA content. And yeah, part of the reason why I decided to get into this space and reached out to you in the first place to start doing something like this was there are so many people with a voice entering the gambling space. And a lot of it, sadly, is misinformation. So if there's listeners out there right now and we'll get into the finals and the game one angles and the series angles that I have. But the basic premise, if you are starting to get into sports gambling and you are starting to take a look more seriously and get more invested in it, obviously it's becoming legal everywhere and there's odds and boosts and all these things. So it's very inviting right now. So a lot mm -hmm. of people are getting invested in it. So if you find yourself as one of those people, what I would say is study other professional experts and people who have been doing this for a long time don't bother wasting your time researching the stats that have happened say over the last 10 games i'll hear a lot of people say oh i'm betting the spread on the warriors tonight because they're 11 and 0 in their last 11 against the spread well listen coming into that 12th game the odds makers are very well aware that they are also 11 and 0 against the spread so that statistic actually means nothing right now the line in the 12th game is going to be skewed because of the previous 11. so to come into that game knowing what happened in the previous 10 games is more or less irrelevant the things that are more important are to evaluate hmm where did this line come out where has the line moved what are the splits where is the money on this game what are the recent travel schedules of these teams so angles like that that are not directly on court metrics or what's happened in the recent games, we have to look bigger picture and think what's happening in the gambling market to identify value, not what's happening in the sports world to identify value. Fantasy friends, degenerates, whoever you might be, we've told you before that if you look for it every day, it has a cause for celebration. But guess what? Coming up soon... First of all, it's springtime, holidays, weddings, birthdays, graduations. It's that time of year now. You don't even have to look for a celebration anymore because they're all right there in front of us. So why not celebrate with the gift of beer, wine, spirits delivered in under 60 minutes with Drizzly? That's right. It's flawless logic. Right now, Drizzly is giving all new customers five bucks off their first order with code SPRING5. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com, D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com, and use promo code SPRING5 for five bucks off your first order. It is incredible, folks. Incredible fastest under 60 minutes it's the number one app for alcohol delivery sign up now make your first order get five bucks off code spring five that's drizzly.com enjoy underdog fantasy is the fastest growing fantasy app and easiest place to play fantasy sports just jump on underdogfantasy.com or download the app draft your team and that's it and if drafts aren't your thing, they also have a pick'em game where you can win 20 times your money in a single night. Use promo code RADIO, and Underdog will double your first deposit when you sign up with up to $100 in bonus cash. Deposit $100? Get $100 free. That's promo code RADIO. Terms and conditions apply. 
Yeah, well said. I, I do a lot of uh, guest spots with my good friend Gil Alexander on VEASAN, and he likes to use the phrase, something that's baked into the number. And all the stuff that you were talking about there, that you know this team has scored 105 points in eight consecutive ball games. that's all baked into the number. They have their power rankings. They don't need to rely on a lot of that stuff, so you got to dig a little bit deeper. And that, to me, is a wonderful segue into the finals, which is an interesting experience because, number one, there's a long layoff between games all the way around. Two teams have had wildly different paths to get there, and now we've got a Boston team known for its defense, and rightfully so, a team that... uh, we I made a ton of money on with an um, in-season Eve just winning the Atlantic wager that now has suddenly made the finals. And then a Warriors team, everybody just thinks about the three-pointers, but actually they were one of the best defensive teams in the NBA as well. So all of a sudden you get this, whenever the hell this game is happening. Is it Thursday? I probably lost track. Thursday night. Yep. I, can't, Thursday, I, I think it's a eight, nine o'clock tip. These late, these late starts kill me on these. Cars. Oh, Mike, honest to goodness, I can't. With the NBA playoffs, the the two months and change of of postseason is just it's absurdly long. I I I feel, and I've said this a million times on this podcast, the baseball regular season is way too long. The baseball playoffs is perfect. The NBA regular season I could do all year round because of the fantasy element, and the playoffs are way way too long. You got to squeeze this thing down. I don't know how they do it without people actually dying on the court with as beat up as they get in the playoffs. But I can't. I can't do it with these long layoffs. In any event, it should be awesome. It should be a really fun series. Warriors getting their their bodies back. Klay Thompson, that's a fun story. Boston, bad for the first 30 games this year. And then all of a sudden, they figured it out, and they've been great since. Where do you start with a when you're looking at the finals? I think you told me before we went on air that the first thing you look at is what's happening in game one. Yeah, I think for this series, the place to start is game one. And you talked about the schedule and you talked about the long layoff between games. But I actually think the Celtics are at a massive, massive rest disadvantage and preparation disadvantage heading into game one. Even though they do have a few extra days, I don't think that's a big enough layoff to curtail the impact that this rest and planning disadvantage have. Uh, To break it down for you, Dan, the last time the Warriors traveled was on May 24th, about a week ago, uh, after Game 4 of the Mavericks Warrior Series where they traveled home for Game 5 before they closed the series. Since that day, Boston has traveled to Miami for Game 5, back to Boston for Game 6, back to Miami for Game 7. They came, I, I looked into this before we started, they came back to Boston Sunday night and landed Monday morning at 4.30 in the morning Oof. after Game 7. And the, the Celtics are traveling today, Tuesday, to San Francisco to, for that game on Thursday. So if you think about this, the Warriors series wrapped up when Boston was up 3-2 heading into game six. And so since that day, the Warriors have been saying, OK, we're going to be in the finals and we're probably going to be playing against the Boston Celtics. So they've had their, self, their Celtics notebooks open. They've been studying the tape. They've been resting in their beds. They've been getting ready to play in the Chase Center. On the flip side of that, just like I said, the Celtics have been playing against the Heat, jumping in the ice bath, and then getting on a plane. It is a lot harder for them to open up their Warriors notebooks and be ready for game one. So when we get to game one and we see a spread of only three and a half, I'm coming into the situation, Dan, saying, let's not overthink this. The Warriors are a great game one team. They are 3-0 and in game ones this postseason. The, the Celtics lost game one against the Bucks and the Heat. Again, don't make it too complicated. Lay the three and a half points. It's not many points. And take the Warriors game one spread. You know what always boggles my mind, and, and we can hang on to that point for just a minute here, is uh, how it, the, the game seven to game one phenomenon almost tends to work. And obviously anything can happen. You know, Boston could come out and they could magically have some wind in their sails because nothing is 100% locked in in gaming which is another thing I think young betters should could keep in their mind if somebody calls something a lock you probably shouldn't trust that person anymore uh but how isn't it amazing how quickly people forget the toll that a seven game bruiser of a series takes on whatever team actually comes out of it alive is it 
it, it always boggles my mind. And, and we've seen it time and time and time again. Teams go seven games. They come out of that completely destroyed. And betters love them because they just saw them conquer in the biggest stage. It's almost like it works doubly where not only do you you kind of get the uh, you get the advantage of knowing that team is at a rest disadvantage. You also get the advantage of knowing that that's a team that, for whatever reason, tends to see extra betting love against what would have normally happened in that situation. And we've seen it now with Boston a couple of times. You just talked about it. Coming off of uh, that Milwaukee series, they were toast. They were in the third quarter in that game against Miami, game one, they had nothing. It was the worst quarter that Jason Tatum's played in his entire NBA career, and it was pretty, pretty easy to capitalize on. Uh, so that's the thing that jumps out. And the other thing, and... and and I want to see if we if we see eye, eye, eye to eye on this as well. I kind of go back and forth at times, but typically when teams are kind of tired and haven't had a ton of time to prep, and Warriors have had a little bit there, I tend to lean towards an over because defenses haven't had an opportunity to set themselves up for a particular opponent after a bunch of games against a different team. And tired legs, everybody thinks, oh, they won't make a jump shot. Yeah, that's true but they also can't stay in front of anybody on defense. Do you have any lean towards the total in game one? Yeah, just to quickly hit on a point that you discussed that game coming off of game seven, I did pull a stat today that says since 1989, there's been uh, about 83 game sevens in NBA playoffs and teams coming off a game seven and then playing in the next game one are 32 and 51 straight up. So they have a 38% win percentage Again, it's a simple thing where we could just say, let's play the numbers and play the Warriors. Now to talk about the total, Dan. Uh, yeah, I also lean towards the over. Not as much because this is coming off of a game seven, like your philosophy, but more because I think both of these teams are going to want to play in pace up situations. They're coming, against, they're coming off of series against very slow teams in the Miami Heat and the Dallas Mavericks. And these are teams that are very good in transition and shoot threes at above a 40% rate. And I'm not saying that they're going to make 40% of their threes. I'm saying two out of every five trips up the court, these teams are going to attempt a three-point shot. So there's going to be high amount of volume of threes. And because of those things, we are likely to go over. If we also look at the betting splits and the stuff that I really value, those, these indicators in the, in the gambling market, it opened at a line of 210, and now it's at 211 and a half. So this point and a half uptick that early before, you know, a few days before the game indicates that there's a lot of sharp action coming on, coming in on the over. So I definitely lean towards over. If we really want to get a little bit gritty with this play and bring it back to your game seven point, I would kind of agree, but also kind of counter. I would say the right play in this situation is to play the first half total mm. over because teams coming off of the game seven actually come out scoring more in their next first half, and then they completely fall off a cliff in the second half. <laughs> yeah, this we, might be a situation we where that. we see the Celtics put up 54 in the, in the first half and end up with a score of 92. <laughs> so where I would lean, if I was going to play the total, is to take a first half over. But in general, I lean over, but I'm also not going to be playing the total personally in game one. Okay, so this segues nicely into the next point, which is you feel pretty strongly about the Warriors coming out ahead in Game 1. That lends itself to different ways to attack the series prices, does it not? Yes, Dan. Uh, love that transition. Thank you. Yeah, I segue for a living. Uh, that's beautiful. Teams that uh, have won Game 1 and have home court advantage, meaning they also have Game 7 at home, they win the series 81% of the time after being up 1-0. So the Celtics coming off this rest disadvantage, this preparation disadvantage, and putting themselves in a really tight spot for game one simply puts them at a tight spot in the series. Now, neutral court, neutral rest, all things equal. I actually think I like the Celtics in this series, and I like the, the team, the coaching staff, their adjustments. I really do love this Celtics team. I happen to be living in Boston right now, but I don't think it's a biased take. I've never been a Celtics fan. Um, but I'm coming into the series saying... The Celtics, because of their previous series, are in a really tight spot. And because of that, I have no interest in betting the series price coming into game one. My plan, Dan, is to bet whoever loses game one in the series price immediately after game one ends. I'm expecting it to be 
the Warriors to take game one. And I'm expecting to jump in on the Maverick. I mean, the jump in on the Celtics at what I expect to be a plus 220 odds after game one. So I don't think there's great value in taking them now at their plus 140 because, again, they're in such a tough spot for game one that we're going to get better value waiting in game two or per, if they happen to pull it off, if, if Celtics win game one, I'm coming right back the other way and betting Warriors in the series because I think there's no chance the Warriors drop two at home in Chase Center. Essentially, Dan, this is a series where I'm expecting the, the, the series to ping pong a little bit back and forth. I think these teams are going to give each other a few punches. Both teams are going to be really, really difficult to beat four times. So I think we're going to see each team take a few games. And because of that, I think I've heard you talk about this on previous podcasts. When you have a series price and, you're, and it's a, a length over seven games, you can kind of get in on both sides and mm-hmm. lock yourself into a profit. Yeah, that was actually going to be my follow-up question. Not to make you talk a whole bunch here, but would you consider the Warriors now and then Boston after game one if that sort of falls into the, the script you've got laid out? So personally, yes. Uh, I'm coming into this, Dan, with a pre-existing Boston Celtics plus 185 finals ticket. So let me quickly touch on how I'm going to play it because it impacts that. If I did not have that ticket, Dan, no, I would not play it. But I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. I actually am going to hedge off of that ticket. Like I said, I'm expecting to get better than that plus 185. I'm expecting to get about a plus 220 on the Celtics after game one. So if I could sell off of that plus 185 ticket now and lock in a little profit there, I will. However, to your point, I don't find their strong value in taking the Warriors series price before game one if you plan on hedging it after game one. If you plan on hedging the Warriors series price after only one game based on where the odds are now, you're actually better off just taking the Warriors money line in game one because the difference in unit differential when you end up hedging it with the Celtics price, you're going to make more money just betting the game one situation. So I think right now, Given the odds and sports gambling and sports handicapping is always about saying, let's evaluate the odds for the right value in the right situation, not I just want to make a play because this is how I feel. It's right now the odds are presenting value for game one and wait on the series. Talk to me a little bit about players. Yeah, I actually have some interesting player props coming up. Uh, I actually had a question for you, Dan. Hit me. Is there any way that you could envision Jason Tatum or Steph Curry not winning MVP? Mm. Could it be Jalen Brown? It's the only other name that would that could surface, I think, at all. I couldn't imagine someone on the Warriors not getting it. They've already done the Iguodala Finals MVP shenanigans from whatever that was six, seven years ago. Uh, no. Could it be anyone else in the Warriors? Could they possibly, like, go try to give it to Jordan Poole, I doubt it. I think that this is a situation where if the Warriors win, they're going to want to try to find a way to give it to Steph. So he would have to be a complete disaster in the series to not win it if the Warriors win. And then on the Boston side, yeah, I mean, there's there's a world where, you know, if Brown goes completely buck wild, but so far what we've seen is that Tatum is the guy who puts up the sort of juicier numbers on a game-to-game basis. So it really feels pretty improbable maybe 5 10% chance that it's not one of those two guys? Yeah, I'm in the same boat, Dan. I think if we get the Celtics win, we're going to have Tatum as the MVP. If we get a Warriors win, we're going to have Curry as the MVP. I think it's pretty simple. I liken this back. I know this is a fantasy podcast. I know it's a season-long fantasy podcast, but I'll kind of extrapolate this to a daily fantasy sense. If you play any of those daily fantasy games, you know Tatum and Curry are those guys on these teams that put up 50-plus DFS points. Everyone else is kind of coming in in that mid to low 30s. They might have a Jalen Brown might have a 40 point uh, fantasy point game. But in general, I just think the sheer accumulation of these stats that the main players are going to get advantage for Curry and Tatum. So my best bet in terms of player props and MVP odds is I actually like using exactly how I'm betting the series to bet the MVP as well. I'm personally, Dan, going to be splitting all of my bets between half, like when I take the Warriors in the series after a few games, or if I take the Celtics after they lose game one, I'm going to be splitting that bet. So it's going to be half a unit on the Celtics series price 
and half a unit on the Tatum MVP price because you get slightly better juiced odds by taking the player. And because I feel so strongly that these are the two preeminent players in the series, you can just tie your series bets to the MVP bets and not lock in all the way, but lock in, say, 50%. So you get slightly better odds in that this, regard. I love this stuff. I love this stuff, man. Here's what I want to do, though. Uh, I want to use... Because I, I, I was going to pivot you into player props, but I want to use that as a, uh, as a tease, effectively. Um, so, Mike here, who has just filled your brain with some outstanding stuff for the finals, has some player prop ideas in the hopper, but if you want to get them, you got to go listen to his podcast or follow him on Twitter. I guess maybe we can do either. Can we say either? Can we give him two options? Absolutely. I will post all of these on my Twitter. I also would like to say I did release already my episode regarding my finals preview where I did go into every single one of these player props with some great angles. So you should definitely go listen to that as well. The Advantage is the name of the podcast at Advantage Pod underscore SE for Sports Ethos. SE. Uh, Please go follow Mike immediately. Please go check out his podcast. He's unbelievably knowledgeable about the NBA and sports betting in general. Mike Fiddle, my man, you're off the hot seat. Thanks so much for coming on. Dan, can I ask you one question before I hop out of here? Of course, here? yeah, it's only fair. All right. We just had Jason Tatum playing in a Game 7. I know you're a lifelong Laker fan. He's wearing a purple 24 Kobe armband. I don't know How what do era we're about in. That? Is the Laker <laughs> versus Celtics rivalry dead? And is this the most likable Celtics team that you've ever seen? Yeah, I I uh, I want to roll with like the uh, the Jerry West line from from Winning Time, but I can't because Jason Tatum is the world's biggest Kobe Bryant fan, and Jalen Brown went to Cal, where I went. So also Al Horford is a perennial Dan Bespris old man squad member. And the Time Lord was one of my top guys for fantasy this year. So there's like, I don't know. I want to I want to despise them. I'm going to root for the Warriors because they are the Celtics, and I can't possibly root for the Celtics as a Laker fan. I'm a pragmatic Laker fan. Let's let's remember that. I don't let it seep into my fantasy stuff. Uh, but no, I don't. I don't hate the Celtics the way that a Laker fan should. Mostly because I have some sort of weird affection for each player individually. Um, so, yeah, that's a very fair question, and I tried to give as measured an answer as possible. <laughs> yeah, I honestly think, yeah, before I just jump out of here, this this Celtics team is historically the most likable Celtics team I've ever seen. I mean, I, I grew up in the KG and Paul Pierce days. They were very easy to root against. So, yeah, now actually living in Boston and having this team reach the finals, I find myself rooting for Boston in this series, even though my bets edge a little bit Warriors right now. I know you want me to jump out of here so you could get on with your family stuff. I don't know if you hear my dog barking in the background, Dan. Yeah, what's up, pup? Actually, my dog is named LeBron. I'm not sure if you knew there that. There you go. Hey, Bron, what's going on? The pup. So, w thanks for having me, Dan. I really appreciate it, and hopefully we could talk again soon. I'd be happy to come back on whenever you need me. That was fantastic, man. And as a parting note, the place where I get my hair cut, which, by the way, is a fantastic Sam's, the owner has a dog in the uh, shop named Kobe. So uh, we're, take, we're covering all of our bases here. He is Mike Fiddle, the man, and soon to be the myth. Uh, again, The Advantage is the podcast, at AdvantagePod underscore SE. Mike, thanks again, my man. Thanks, brother. Take care. Take that dude is sharp, man. If you guys didn't feel that coming through, I love the passion, too. You can tell how much he, he just adores digging into the NBA. By the way... Uh, pulling back the curtain a little bit, um, right at the end of the show, or at the end of the, the segment that just concluded, Mike was mentioning how, um, well, actually, I don't know. So, we're going to talk some season win totals in a little bit. Um, that'll probably be in August. I think those come out in August. I don't think it's September. I don't think we have to wait that long. And, um... Mike has a little theory on using season win total numbers in fantasy handicapping, which is really cool. And he was up, oh my God, Mike sent me an email last night after we recorded that segment at about 4.45 a.m. his time. 
He's a crazy person. I love it. I love having fellow degenerates here on the podcast. So really, that was that was a good segment from Mike. A go again follow at AdvantagePod underscore SE. Again, I, I will also tag it in the, when this thing goes out on Twitter so you guys can find it that way as well. Uh, really good show, and we're thrilled to have him around here. I think he's also going to be assisting the NFL guys with some of their DFS as well. So that'll be cool. Another spot you can look out for Mike in the coming months. Coming up on the podcast tomorrow, again, we dive back into team breakdowns, Washington Wizards. Friday, We it's not going to be a playoff show on Friday. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about what happened in the playoff game on Thursday on Friday's show. But really, going forward, we're not going to have those non-fantasy shows. That's kind of done now. Now that we're into the part of the year where there's generally, there's only one game happening, we don't have to do like a series odds reset. We can just do that after any individual game happens in the finals. So to those of you that hated the Friday betting shows, don't worry, they're done. Today actually was kind of the last betting specific podcast we're going to do this season. Back into team breakdowns, we're going to work our way through those, probably five a week, and then Yahoo's ADP breakdowns. And then what I'd like to do, and you guys know I don't know anything about rookies, and I certainly don't know anything about rookies coming in. Like, I got a pretty good feel for rookies after a couple of weeks of them actually playing. Before they start, mm-mm, I got nothing. I can't help you out at all there. But you know who can? Some very sharp people here at Sports Ethos. Steven Bagel, William Harris, David Williams, Corbin Ford, to name a few. There's more. I'm sure I'm leaving people out, which sucks, because I... Probably should have written them all down, but I'm I'm sort of off the cuffing it here in this part of the podcast. Uh, I'll try to get a few of those guys here on this show and just let them wax poetic a little bit. Like, I don't even know the right questions to ask other than, hey, are any of these guys, like, let's say that player X, I know there's a player named Chet that's probably going to go in the top few picks. Let's say player Chet, <laughs> I know this makes me sound like an idiot, but whatever, you guys know I don't like the youngsters ends up on a team where he plays a ton of minutes. Is this a guy that could translate to NBA fantasy appeal? He's a big man. Can he hit his free throws? Things like that. So we'll talk to some folks that are studying the draft really hard. That's coming up in about three weeks, which I don't think we'll actually be done with the team breakdowns by then. We might have to step aside momentarily. And then two weeks after that, it's free agency. Less, actually. It's like a week and a couple of days after that. It's coming, baby. It's coming. Once we get into free agency, we can reset the different teams, and then you really start to make your preliminary lists. So, friends, it's June. I know. Happy birthday to me. It's June. We are kind of through. I I believe that May is the toughest month for talking about fantasy sports in the NBA because there's sort of nothing. We had the lottery this month. But, you know, in April you have games. In June, you have the draft. In July, you have free agency. In August, you have summer league. And then you're there. May is the only month where there really isn't any one thing that brings us all together on the fantasy side. Now, as I've already mentioned, I don't really pay attention to the draft, but we have people who do, and we'll get them on the pod to talk about it. That's what's coming up here on the podcast here in the month of June Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that finals breakdown with the great Mike Fiddle. I am Dan Baspris. Have a delightful Wednesday. Talk to you about tomorrow. The Wiz. And still, nobody beats me. Later. Dunkin' Refreshers are the perfect way to get a little more out of your day. With more tropical flavors like new mango pineapple and more ways to get glowing. Available with green tea, coconut milk, or lemonade. You've got what you need to make the most out of every moment. Even the ones spent stuck in traffic. <sighs> what a beautiful day. Sip into all your favorite Dunkin' Refreshers like new mango pineapple. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Additional charges may apply. Introducing Under Armour's Infinity High Sports Bra. 
Its ergonomic design is molded to support the natural movement of your body. With cord out padding, the better breathability eliminates extra bulk without sacrificing support. And quick dry padding is Under Armour's fastest drying padding yet. When you're lifting heavy, running fast, and pushing yourself further than ever before, you need a bra that will help you go that extra mile and make you feel your best. Shop the Infinity High Sports Bra now at UA.com.